What's going on guys? This is Eric for Atypical Outdoors. Today we're going to talk about everybody's favorite subject and that is frog fishing. And not just frog fishing, but bigger than average frogs. I'm talking giant frogs. Here you have the Spro King Daddy and here you have the new Zoom Hollow Belly Frog. Two super big frogs. Now guys, before you go any farther, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Also, make sure to watch the end of the video. My buddy Ted's gonna come through and drop a ton of knowledge on frogs. He's caught over a 10 pounder on a frog, sevens and eights. He just has tons of knowledge regarding frogs. I know about frogs some, but he's that dude. So guys, let's hop straight into this video and talk about these giant frogs. Let's go. Well guys, these are some of the biggest frogs on the market. These frogs are insanely big. I mean, you can see some of the legs in these frogs go out to almost seven to eight inches long from that zero mark. Just an insanely big target. They're big frogs which draw big bites. These are the class of the Titans, some of the biggest frogs on the market. And I actually like both of them. I want to break down exactly what is different because they are completely different from each other and they are super, super dope. All right, guys, the first frog I want to talk about is going to be the Spro King Daddy. Now, this is a big frog. I'll give you an example. It comes in at 3.5 inches and also one ounce. Now, it is some perks to it being one ounce. First off, you can cast it a country mile. I'm talking about getting it way out there. Also, with it being one ounce, the biggest perk is it's going to push that duckweed down and it's going to push some of that vegetation down. So when you're reeling in this frog at a super slow speed, it's going to leave a trail and it sinks down versus having a lighter frog and having to add some BBs into it. That is a super good benefit. Also, walkability. This frog walks super easy. Also, when you're pulling this frog through the pass and you get like a spot that's a clear opening, you can walk it back and forth and keep it in place and fish it slowly. Everybody knows when you have top water and you can fish it slowly sometimes, that's when you get your strikes. Also, the next thing about this frog is going to be six out hooks. These things are super sturdy. You're not going to have to worry about bending these out. They're pretty massive, which says, guys, make sure you have a heavy rod or either extra heavy. You're really going to have to stick a fish with hooks this big. Now, next, you're going to have super durable plastic. This stuff is really durable. I had this frog for over a year. No rips, no tears. But that comes as a drawback too, because with this super durable plastic, it doesn't push down quite as easy. You're really gonna have to stick a fish. The fish is really gonna have to have it. You have to be patient and you're really gonna have to stick them because this plastic is super durable and these hooks don't stick up hardly any at all. That's a good looking frog. I was about to say, man, you get, got oh my God. That way it comes through vegetation super easy, but that is a drawback and it also is a pro. That, my friends, is going to be the Spro King Daddy, 3.5 inches, 1 ounce, and it comes in at $12.99. Great frog if you're looking for a big bite. Now, let's get into the next frog. All right, guys, this next frog hasn't been on the market too long, and that is the Zoom Hollow Belly Frog. Super cool frog, man, I must say. It's uh, 3.5 inches, too, and it has a couple of very unique characteristics, which being a third tail, most frogs don't have three tails or three legs. But it's really cool. It's fairly light. I think it comes in between five eights and seven eights. Uh, a little bit lighter than your Spro King Daddy. Also, this particular frog, one of the biggest things for me is the material is super soft. So it collapses very easy. If a bass smells this bad boy or gets close to it, those hooks are going to stick them. So as you can see, guys, those hooks actually stick up some. So it may not be quite as weedless. But on the flip side, though, you're getting a frog that's going to have a great hookup ratio. Uh, I had one fish that bit this frog when I was using it, and I stuck it. I was happy with it. Both hooks got in that particular frog. It's a good fish. Hell yeah. Epic frog blow. <clears throat> Got him, guys. Not a giant, but that was epic, man. So, super unique frog, fairly lightweight, may not be quite as weedless as the Spro King Daddy, but also it's a little bit lighter. So, if you don't have as much of heavy duty equipment, 
this frog might be the one for you if you're looking for a bigger size frog. So this one, I gotta test some more. The only downside to it may be that super soft material that may not last quite as long, but you're probably gonna stick more fish and have a better hookup ratio. All right, guys, that wraps up the comparison between the two frogs, two great frogs if you're looking for big frogs. Now, let's hop into that video with Ted. He's dropping some gems, guys. So please be sure to subscribe to his channel and check out his content. Let's go. Hey there, it's Ted from Ted Lincoln's Fishing Life here on Atypical Outdoors' channel. He's asked me here to talk to you about frogs, which is kind of ironic. I uh, started going down this frog fishing rabbit hole uh, because of a comment Eric made on our first fishing trip to Orange Lake. And here I am a year and a half later and two of my three largest bass of all time were caught on a frog. I got a 9.2 and a 10 pounder, which I just caught a few weeks ago. I've probably caught 200 bass in the last month on a frog during this whole virus uh, scare. Um, that 10 and eight, the seven, and I think a bunch of sixes and fives and you know, so it needs to say I've uh, embraced frog fishing. I guess first of all, we should start with the frogs. Here's my frog box. Keep them in a perforated box. They like to stay wet, so this lets them breathe. It's a great box by Plano. As you can see, I have quite a collection now. My favorite frog of all time is this pad crasher in what they call Old Smoky. It's kind of a gray with black flake. Um, my new, probably second favorite frog is the Trash Panda by 13 Fishing. This is the black one in the standard shape. Amazing frog. What do you look for in a frog? Well, first of all, you want it to collapse so that you can get to the hooks. Some of these frogs are a little stiffer. I actually like these Strike King Hack Attack frogs for fishing in lily pads. They come through the pads, they're a little more bullet shaped. They come through the pads really well, but they're kind of stiff. So I'll boil them in water twice, put them in a pot. All my stiff frogs, the Spros are the same way. Put them in a pot of water, boil it, let it cool down, boil it again. So you boil them twice, it softens them a little. Incru improves your hookup, makes the frog wear out a little faster, but I'd rather catch the fish and have to buy a new frog than have the frog and not catch the fish. Up. But I usually just look for ones that the hooks are very tucked in line with the body. Um, and I'd say 90% of the time I throw the standard style frog, in usually a dark color, a black or this gray. I feel like it's an underused color. It works well in dark water because it has a good silhouette. It works well in clear water because they don't quite know what it is and it's just up there on the surface. Um, I do use white frogs, which are most other frogs, even though they'll be frog colored or bluegill colored, they're still on the bottom, they're white. Some will have a little green. To me, they look more like a shad or a bait fish. I guess some of the frogs actually do look like frogs, especially ones with the little legs on them, which I don't use that often, but every now and then in super clear water, these are a killer. So yeah, if I use these style 90% of the time, when do I use the other ones? Well, the poppin' frog is probably my next most used one. Um, I'll use these in rainy conditions or slightly windy conditions where the surface of the water is a little rougher, you need to stand out a little bit more. They don't work well in heavy grass or pads because of the blunt end. They tend to get caught and it's really frustrating. But in open water, they're really great. And our open hydrilla mats, I'll throw these into the little openings and holes. People will be ripping lipless crankbaits all around and I'll be throwing frogs on the top instead. And believe me, it works. When do I use these? Uh, I tend to use them when I see them chasing bait fish. Or if I'm in really heavy pads, or if I know in that lake that they are focusing on fish instead of frogs or crayfish or something else. Um, I've seen bass chase brim and bluegill up onto lily pads and then get away. And if I ever see that now, I definitely grab one of these and I've caught some monsters on these. They, when there's the time and the place for these, when they're working, they really work. Yeah, so those are the frogs I tend to use. So what tackle do I use? Well, I have two setups that I use. 
this is my primary one right here. It's a 7.2 Heavy. This is Shimano. Any brand will work, but I uh, like this Shimano SLX. Run in a Shimano LX, SLX 150 size reel with 50 pound braid. You want a heavy rod, but you want a short enough rod that you can twitch it so you can walk the frog when it's in open water. You'll get it into openings and then you can twitch it. Sometimes in really heavy cover, you're just dragging the frog across the, the cover or through the weeds or in between the reeds and you don't have to worry about that as much. But a lot of the time, whenever you hit open water, you want to twitch your frog, make it walk. Uh, the popping frogs tend to be really good at walking too, just so you know. I use the 50 pound braid instead of 65 like a lot of other people do because I want the extra line on my spool. Because when I'm frog fishing, I want to make bomber casts back into those pockets where I can't even get my boat. That's what I got a frog on for. And with this setup, I'll almost spool this reel of 50 pound braid to get it far enough back there. I, and that's the only reason I like 50 over 65. And I've yet to break the 50 off on just the break off. Uh, I've bent the hook out, the hooks out on frogs before I've had this line break. So I figure 50 pound braid seems to be working for me. And I do have one other rod I use for frog fishing. It's not my frog rod. This is my heavy Texas rig slash jig rod. It's a 7.6, also a heavy rod, bigger reel, it's a 200, but also have 50 pound braid on it. And I use this for the bigger frogs, uh, or if I'm casting into extremely heavy grass and pads. Eric, I know you know what lake I'm talking about. But yeah, sometimes you just need that extra length for leverage to get the bass out of there. Because in that super heavy cover, you're not walking it anyway. You're just trying to get it to have some action on the surface. So in those cases, I'll pick up this rod. Uh, so yeah, I always have a frog rod in my boat. This one, I don't always have this one set up, but I always have this one set up because it doesn't matter what time of the year down here in Florida, they'll hit a frog. Might not be the best bait to use, but you'll definitely get a bite. And like I said, it's caught me monsters. And here in the spring leading into the summer, it's hard to beat a frog. You can get back there into the same heavy cover that you would punch into, but 30, 40 feet back where you definitely can't punch your lure into. And that's where some of the big ones, especially in some spots that other people won't even throw a frog. That's why I have the extra heavy setup or the extra long setup is to be able to throw this into spots that even people who frog fish wouldn't necessarily throw the lure into. Does it backfire on me? Occasionally. But like I've told my friends before, I'd rather get the bite and worry how to get the fish out of it than not get the bite at all. Getting the bite's the first problem. Getting it out is the second. Well guys, I hope my frog fishing tips were helpful. And Eric, you and I still need to go frog fishing. Let's make it happen. And also guys, look out for my epic frog fishing video, which I'm still editing. It's gonna be epic. Uh, thanks again. This is Ted from Ted Lincoln's Fishing Life. See you guys. I'm out. Well guys, that is a wrap. I hope you enjoyed the video. Down below put, what's your favorite frog? And also, do you like fishing big frogs? Be sure to check out Ted's channel and his content and subscribe to both of our channels. You guys take care and have a great day. We'll see you on a video soon.